Back with game 2 between Black Olivia and Karen Smith. Um, Mojama used his team in the last round as a Scarf and Heliger with Toxic Spikes. They win Kuhn, a uh, defensive land though. Um, he has Specs as he moves Lele, Spadef ish, Feral Stone, like mixed defensive, Megalopony then at the end of the team. And yeah, on Karen's side, it's obviously defensive Clef. Um, I'm thinking Scarf Greninja. If it's if one of the monsters Scarf is Greninja, um, this is a free Clefable here. Um, I'm thinking this is DD Dogronium or maybe South, maybe. Z ground move as well, but like some sort of ground Z, some sort of Z move Zygarde is what I'm trying to say. Uh, obviously, Devox Zapdos, potential Spadev Jirachi with wish support for the team. It could also be Healing Wish. Um, Clefable can go for the rocks here. The fact that Crit didn't do too too much, and I think Black Wolverine is also gonna get up his own rocks here. Um, if it's Zard Y, Karen can go hard into Zard Y here, put offensive pressure on uh, Black Oblivion. His only like d somewhat decent switch into Zard Y is Nihiligo. And Nihiligo will take a good chunk with Rocks up, and it can only switch in like once or twice to Zard. I think it can switch in twice, barely. Mm -hmm. um, but like with Rocks up and everything taken into consideration, it cannot switch in that well. And Karen also has a Jirachi that walls the Nihiligo. So, like, this is completely fine for Karen if the. Nihiligo like comes out here. Um, Lando can potentially live a hit, but he wants to keep the Lando healthy for the Zygarde in the back. The Zygarde is a threat if it's like the sub DD variant for sh like for sure. Uh, the crit definitely sucks. They would have done around 30. Goes into Jirachi. I hope he predicts that and goes for T spikes. Nice play from Black Oblivion's side. So Jirachi can um, go for Yudan here to keep up momentum. Black Oblivion is most likely gonna go to Ferrothorn or Landorus here. Um, but yeah, looking at it, um, the T-Spike only hurt, hits the Greninja and the, the Zygarde. You can go back into Clefable, uh, looking at Karen's team. I don't think there's a Flamethrower Clef. Um, I'm thinking it's either Command or Knockoff Clef. Uh, Rocks are already revealed, so the other moves are Soft Blood Moonblast. And then the last move is uh, either Knockoff or CM, that's what I'm thinking at least. And yeah, he's just gonna Moonblast here, he doesn't lose anything. Pharaoh comes out here, and yeah, if the Clef has knockoff, that's a completely fine play here. Um, the reason why it shouldn't have Flamethrower is he has, um, like, Zard Y and Zapdos to deal with Scizor. Goes for knockoff, and Black Oblivion loses the specs on top of it, that sucks a lot. Um, if that's a Spidef Jirachi, it would have checked this super well anyways. Um, HP Fighter is like, I think 35 of its specs, but now it's gonna do nothing to Spidef Jirachi. Maybe it would have done even a little bit more than 35 if it kept the specs. But yeah, um, this is a free Jirachi for Karen. Um, if I'm Black Oblivion here, I would double into Suicune. Double goes in the land, there was, um, that, that covers the Jirachi as well. Um, so there wasn't like there wasn't like a bad play on Black Oblivion's side, but I think doubling into Suicune um, would have given him like um, would have like Suicune can put more pressure on Karen. Um, but yeah, the knockoff land was really interesting. Get rid of the lefties and cleft. That's nice for Black Oblivion. So um, Moonblast is gonna come out here. Nihilego was pretty much dead soon. Okay, okay, softball, yeah. Softball makes sense because uh, Clef lost its lefties and in case he went for Earthquake, you want to keep it healthy. Just Sludge Waves this time. I mean, Nihilego only has like two rock more rock switch ins. And yeah, this is not looking too good for Black Oblivion. He has to somehow um, get his Suicune in and like get a sub up, get a Calm Mind up. And then he can Suicune so put in work with the pressure ability. He can stall out um, Discharge from Zapdos. Goes for Power Punch, not sure, hmm, why did Karen not switch or go for U-turn? Um, so Karen is gonna go Clef now, what? Goes for Protect, anticipating a high jump kick. Um, so he can cover um, the Protect play and cover the going Clefable, there was a Fire Blade from Black Elf inside. Go, gets a sub up here, U-turn is not gonna break the, the sub. Gets more lefties back, um, so he might go for Command here, anticipating Karen to go for Heat Wave. Um, because if he goes for Protect here and Karen goes for Discharge, that's already two Discharge PP gone because of pressure. Um, now he gets a Calm Mind up. I mean, I understand why Karen just Discharged, like you don't want to risk him not protecting and then like getting up a CM for free and you go for Heat Wave. But yeah, two Discharge used is already four Discharge PP gone. Only um, 20 PP left, which means only 10 PP left versus Suicune. Um, I feel like um, Heat Wave might be coming out here because the Protect is super obvious. He comments again, anticipating a Heat Wave, but Karen um, gets the play correct, goes for this jet. That does no damage. Really risky play on Black Olivian's part, but he doesn't get Parrot. 
Um, so Suikun can really put in the work for him. Yeah, Karen is forced to discharge now because there's a plus two Suikun. Like, you cannot um, afford to play around anymore. Like, uh, has been discharging the entire time. But now, when there's like two CMs up, um, sub, I think discharge is a roll to break the sub. So, like, the Karen is definitely forced to spam discharge at this point. And only 12 left, I think. That means only uh, 6 left. With pressure and count in. So, if Black Oblivion gets a roll here, the sub doesn't break. And he can go for protect and get more lefties back. And the Suicune puts in a lot of work for him. Uh, like, this is the main way of winning this game. Nice play by Karen. They're going for Heatwave on the protect. Um, he can, like, Scald or Calm Might again here. There wasn't a Zygarde there. Karen can potentially DD here, predicting a protect. So, if I'm Black Oblivion, I would just go for Scald. Go for protect. Okay, okay, it worked out for him, it worked out. And Zyga takes some more poison damage. And yeah, like I said, it's most like easy move. Zyga doesn't have lefties or anything like that. Um, like we did, we just saw that now that it doesn't have lefties, but I was pretty sure from team period that this is some Z move Zygarde. And yeah, Black Oblivion is just gonna scald here. And I don't see how Karen like revenges this Grin this Kuhn. Um If the Greninja has like uh, some sort of physical move. I don't think low kick does anything to Kuhn. It's 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 gonna have to be um, it's gonna have to be gunk shot. But Kuhn can like oh he goes to Zard first. Um, wants to weaken the Kuhn. Solar beam is gonna come out here. Yeah, even if the Gwen has gunk shot, it doesn't like the Kuhn is still too healthy. So Karen has to weaken the Kuhn a bit more, and then potentially Greninja can revenge it. And if Greninja can't revenge it, that means the Kuhn just wins for Black Oblivion, which um. Which would mean we would see a game three. But let's see how this goes. Goes for Solar Beam. I think Solar Beam doesn't do that much. There's like 25 maybe at plus three. 28. Okay, that's still a good chunk. Skull's gonna kill. And I assume the Greninja has to come out now. And yeah, Black Oblivion can go for Protect here, get more lefties back, which puts him at uh, 60%. And since the sun is up, Skull will not kill the Greninja. So um, Greninja is gonna be able to get two gunk shots on the Kuhn. Um, if you can hit that 2 it KOs, that does a lot. I assume this is like a max attack on Angel. Uh, it, some, it has a lot, a lot of attack investment for sure. So Kuhn can protect here, Black Oblivion can protect here. And, and now I would definitely switch out because Suikun is his um, like main offensive threat. It's gonna be hard to set up this Kuhn again, but if he switches out here... Oh, he tries to get a double protect. I don't like that play, to be fair. Um, there was a plus... 3 um, Kuhn in Karen's face, so Karen was not gonna over predict there, and Greninja also died to rocks. So Karen wasn't gonna switch, and I'm pretty sure Karen was locked in as well. Um, unless there was bandit damage, but I don't think I was. I think it was just max attack Scarf Grin, but I should run the Kalk. Um, I'm actually gonna pause it and run a Kalk real quick. But I think what Black Oblivion should have done is he should have switched out into Ferrothorn Zone there because the gunk shot again was pretty obvious, and then he could have doubled. Um, actually, now doubling back into Kuhn doesn't help him that much because rocks are up. If, if rocks weren't up, he could have then doubled back into Kuhn and gotten more lefties and gotten his Kuhn more healthy. But yeah, to, yeah be, to be fair, it was really hard for Black Oblivion to get his Kuhn healthy again with rocks up. And like... Because like, if you, if rocks are up, then Kuhn comes in and gets lefties uh, on a double. Like, let's say Kuhn comes in on a double, gets lefties, Protects gets more lefties. But then he just cancelled out the damage that he took from rocks, so he doesn't really gain much. So it's a bit different. Hmm. Then if there were no rocks, since Lily lost the specs, um, it's also not really a threat to Karen. Even if it had the specs, Jirachi was just uh, nice in this matchup. And yeah, there's a free Jirachi for Karen and rocks are on Black Oblivion's side. So even if Black Oblivion doubles, he has to take rocks. And Karen doesn't care too much about the rocks because Jirachi resists rocks. Clef has magic guard. The only one that cares about uh, rocks is the Zapdos, but the Zapdos has um, Roost and wish Jirachi has Wish Path. And the Spikes also only hurt the Jirachi, so this doesn't really put. Black Oblivion in the best of positions. Um, I guess I'm gonna run a Kalk at the end of the game if the Greninja was banded. But since the, since the Suicune was Scarf, uh, not Scarf, fast Suicune, uh, it only runs, I think, max HP and a lot of speed and like, maybe something in Spidev. Uh, it doesn't run a defense investment, so it makes sense that the Gangshot did a good chunk. I'm just used to Suicune being super bulky because um, I used Krokun a lot in Auras. And yeah, there's the Uton and the Jirachi. I assume we're gonna see a Leech Sheet come out here. And uh, there's the leash sheet on a Zapdos, and Karen is gonna defog eventually. Um, Zapdos showed Heatwave actually earlier, which is pretty surprising to me. I've talked about this. Um, offensive Lando, like STZ move Lando, 
or just SD Smackdown off, but Lando seems like a big threat to Karen's team. So I'm really surprised that this is Discharge Heatwave Defog because the last move has to be Roost. Um, unless it's um, unless the last move is um, Hidden Power Eyes and he Karen banks on Jirachi Wish passing into Zapdos to keep it healthy instead of Roost. Um, this is really weird to me. Like like I said, like Offensive Lando is a big threat. Like I don't get that this Zapdos doesn't have HP Eyes. Like Heatwave is mainly for like Scissor and like what else does it hit? Uh, Ferrothorn. Yeah, it makes sense for Ferrothorn, um, so you can threaten out the Ferrothorn and defog for Yzard. So in that sense it makes sense, but looking at the offensive Lando matchup, um, it's a bit tough. Um, so yeah, Lily comes out here, but um, like I don't feel there's much to narrate. Karen Sims is just in a fantastic position at this point. Um, like, even if Black Oblivion doubles and predicts Jirachi, Karen just goes back into the Zapdos here. And I guess you can go for a uh, goes into Clefable. Yeah, never mind, never mind. Yeah, Clefable is a smart play because Clefable is already knocked off, and you want to keep the leftovers on Yzapdos. You don't want to let uh, Yzapdos get knocked off as well. So he's gonna softball here. But yeah, since the Lando doesn't have SD or anything, it cannot break through the Clef. It also I don't think it can break through Zapdos either. But going Clef is fine, like I said, because of the um, yeah, you don't want to let Yzapdos get knocked off, like I already said. And yeah, Black Oblivion like. Predict is Jirachi, but it doesn't matter because it resists rocks, it has protect, so basically it took no damage since it has lefties. And now Karen can just go back into Clef, so unless he gets a crit, he doesn't make any progress. He doubles into Pharaoh, but like he doesn't make any progress. And I don't know if the Pharaoh is knocked off already, I don't think it is, but Clefable can eventually just knock off the Pharaoh. And if um, Karen gets up hazards, then the Pharaoh, or like keeps moonblasting the Pharaoh and it knocks off the Pharaoh, then the Pharaoh will get worn down. Uh, Lichi would be a nice play here, but yeah, Karen is just gonna defog here, I'm pretty sure, since there's um, a lot of hazards on his side. Karen is actually 48 on the <laughs> Karen is 48 on the forums. That's some fake, like fake information. Like you don't, you cannot tell me that you're 48 on the, on the profile on Smogon and like I know it's weird. I also don't know if it's a girl. Uh, I've been saying he the entire time. I actually think it's a she. Mm-hmm. That's at least what I've heard about. Um, I mean, sorry has <laughs> told me some stories. I'm not gonna go into detail. Um, actually, I don't know if I should have said that. Fuck. Actually, I didn't say anything. But Jirachi is gonna not go for protect because rocks are obvious, and you just wanna go, yeah, switch back out. Like if you protect there, you give Black Oblivion a free turn. Yeah, knocks off the uh, lefties. This is what I'm talking about. Like, this Pharaoh cannot even do anything to the Clef. So, like, I don't know why Karen has even switched out. Like, he can just Moonblast this down. Because Fable has Softball to heal. And Pharaoh cannot do anything to the Clef. Like, I don't think... They don't run Jarball anymore. Even if they run Jarball, it only has 8pp. It gets stalled out easily. Um, yeah, the power-up wouldn't have done much to Clef. And also wouldn't have done much to Zapdos. Yeah, though, Karen is going to defog again. Bagulin can spike or get a Leech Sheet here. But, yeah. Like, his only form... Of recovery on his Pharaoh is Leech Sheet, and the only way you can get Leech Sheet recovery is on a Zapdos, um, because the Clefable has Magic Guard, and Jirachi is not going to be staying in on um, on a Pharaoh Thorn anyway. And like, Bagolin can double all the time, but I think his only win condition is like critting the Clefable down with the Landris, or Karen misplaying. But like, Karen just has all the tools to win this game. And yeah, see the Clefable, not the Clefable, the Ferrothorn keeps getting chipped down. And since the Zapdos has pressure, I've already talked about this. Um, if Pharaoh predicts the Zapdos and goes for Leech Sheet to get more health back, it can only do that a few times because Zapdos has pressure, like Leech Sheet PP run out kind of fast. And Jirachi can come out here every time on Tapu Lele. And even if Black Oblivion doubles back in the land, like he keeps repeating this, it doesn't matter. Um, because then Karen just goes back into Clefable. Like, the only way Black Oblivion would make any progress is if he had, like, a Z move on this Lando or if he, like, would crit the Clefable with Earthquake. Um, this team just doesn't have a Z move, I think, right? The Black Oblivion's team. Pretty sure it doesn't have. And yeah, the Moonblast chip on Ferrothorn just is nice for Karen. And the Heligos also super low. This is a free Jirachi again. Yes, you can double into Landris, but again, Karen just goes back into Clef. Begalonian doesn't make any progress unless he crits the clef. Um, this is going to be pretty repetitive, so um, I might have to skip some turns. Now nah, I think it will just we'll watch the entire game. Like um, he gets a crit there, but Karen is going to softball here. Um, yeah, see, like if Karen misplayed there and then softball, that's like basically what Black Oblivion has to hope for. Yeah, now he's getting the crits that he needs. If he crits again here, maybe he has a shot. 
I, I couldn't have killed, right? But the last crit did 52 and 55. Maybe crit high roll would have killed. Um, yeah, if he actually crit the clef again there and got the potential roll on that, that would have put that would have given Black Oliver like some sort of chance to win this game. But I just don't see him winning this game. So Lando is going to eventually run out of quakes. I guess if the clef runs out of softballs, that would help Black Oliver even a bit. I think Earthquake has like the same amount of PP than softball. Um, so he's gonna switch back into Pharaoh, but like Pharaoh's gonna get worn down. He cannot really switch into Nihiligo anymore, and goes super low. And Lopani would be the only one that could potentially do it if it had power up punch and if the Clefable maybe runs out of softball. If there, yeah, Lopani already showed power punch, pretty sure, right? Yeah, Lopani can potentially do it. Um, if Zapdos stays in range from return, or like if, um, I don't remember how healthy Lopani is, so if Lopani comes out, I will tell you if it can potentially put him work. But it's gonna be tough for Black Oblivion for sure. Like, he doesn't make any progress. Um, the plays are, like, repetitive. Um, I think he's gonna get a Brox in the long run because um, Karen always goes on a Clef on the land and not in the Zapdos. Because uh, Karen wants to keep the lefties on Zapdos. It obviously makes sense. But um, if you go on the Clef, that means um, you don't pressure pp you don't stall pressure pp from the landris that means um you don't have more defog than rocks if you if you go zapdos on a defog um that would mean uh, on the rocks that would mean two rocks pp get wasted but if you go clef every time um that would mean only one rock pp gets wasted and rocks has more pp than defog so eventually rocks might go up but i don't think it will matter um it's just it's just looking bad for black oblivion and it's looking like karen will take the series 2-0 um, let's see. I mean, Bagelin is gonna fight. He's gonna keep going. He doesn't want to give up. I mean, he can leash it again here, but his Pharaoh, like if he leashes, like I've talked about this before, it wastes PP because that does his pressure. And if he doesn't, it stays at seventy percent. And if it comes and repeated um, again on Moonblast from Clef, it just gets worn down, worn down, worn down, and eventually Pharaoh's on dies. And yeah, when Lando runs out of Earthquake, it's also going to be um, walled by Jir not not walled by Jirachi, it still has knockoff but it's going to be walled by Clef even more than it already is and yeah, Zapdos having Heatwave helped Karen a lot in this match um, to force Ferrothorn out but yeah, I've talked about this, like defense offensive Lando seems like a threat to Karen's team and yeah, Karen's going to roost here, I assume Yes, he keeps his Lele healthy, he gets some late sheet, but like... This is just a free switch into Jirachi. Yes, Karen takes spikes, but it doesn't matter. Get some lefties back, and then just Karen just goes back in the clef. Um, clef can just go for Moonblast or Rocks. Probably ro uh, Moonblast is what I meant. Yeah, not, not Rocks, because you want to uh, defog again with Zapdos. So yeah, this is what I'm talking about. Now Ferrothorn just gets chipped, chipped, chipped. Uh, he tries to predict the Zapdos there. It didn't work at all, and yeah, Pharaoh's getting chip, chip, chip. Clef has Magic Guard. He tries to predict the Zapdos again. It doesn't work. I mean, Karen didn't lose anything from staying in. I understand Black Oblivion's play. Like he has to try to somehow to come back. Yeah, there were, there, those were another two leash GPP that he um, used up. And yeah, once he runs out of leash sheet, this Pharaoh has no way to get health back, and it's just gonna die slowly but surely Jirachi can come out here there's no hazard anymore Jirachi's gonna get lefties it's gonna recover all the hazard damage that it took earlier it was only like a few six percent that it got back but like you guys get what I'm trying to say um Karen's team stays healthy like it's only three months left versus five but like Karen is still in a better position if the Lily still had the specs and could like crit the Jirachi with hidden power fire it could potentially put in some work but even then Black Oblivion would still have to predict because Jirachi has protect and Karen could go back into the clef on the HP fire and then double back into Jirachi on the double from Black Oblivion to get the Jirachi healthy again um, so like overall it's tough for Black Oblivion um, he has the Zapdos lead shield here and he has spikes up but spikes only hit Jirachi it doesn't really matter to Karen, Karen can just switch out into clef here eventually or go for heat wave uh, just defog. I don't think the defog was necessary. Was necessary, but on the other side, Karen doesn't lose anything, and goes into Jirachi again here. Obviously, like I don't even have to like be a genius to know that. Like the plays are pretty repetitive, but I know some people like it if I don't skip turns. So even though it's repetitive, I'm gonna we're gonna keep 
doing going Moonblast. Um, so gets a nice chip on the later, gets a spatek drop even. Can just go on the Jirachi here, don't have like doesn't have to risk anything. Psychic does negative damage. Uh, Jirachi can either go for Wish or U-turn. And Clef can come back out here. And go for Moonblast. And yeah, Pharaoh keeps getting chip, chip, chip. And yeah, it got like a little bit of health back early from the Leech Sheet. But yeah, Leech Sheet is gonna run out soon if I assume he has only a few left. Goes Jirachi, I assume a protect is coming here. Goes for Wish. Okay, that was that was fine as well. Um so I don't know why Karen stayed in there. I guess yeah, Karen, that was a fine play, he could just iron head it. Um so that's such GG already. Um Did you turn on Iron Head? Iron Head, okay. So like he's tempted to not go for HJK because Jirachi has a protect has protect, so that's why he went for a return there. I think Jirachi would have lived HJK anyway. But yeah, if HJK crit there that could and killed the Jirachi, maybe then um he would have had a shot potentially. But yeah, they already said GG, I'm pretty sure Karen won this game, but I'm just a bit behind because I didn't skip any turns and they're playing super fast. I like guess repetitive and like it's understandable why they're playing fast. But yeah, we're still gonna watch the end. I'm pretty sure Karen already won it. As I said. So yeah, Moonblast puts the land on range from another Moonblast. Can just Moonblast again here. And uh, now there's another crit and it just speeds up the process a bit. Jirachi's gonna come out here. And even if Bagalavian predicts it in HP5, since he's at minus one, that wouldn't do much at all. Jirachi can go for Wish or Protect or Iron Head. Um, I think Wish is the safest play overall. Mm -hmm. uh, so now you can Protect here to keep Jirachi healthy. Rocks are already up. And like, if Land Red has do anything to pressure Karen Smith's team, maybe this would have been a different game. Um, Kuhn could have win for Black Oblivion if he dodged a gunk shot or. Uh, if Black Eleven had some sort of hazard removal, Kuhn could have also won if he got rid of the rocks and doubled the Kuhn in and got it back healthy again. But it would have been tough for him anyway. Like, this was a tough matchup overall. But yeah, I'm pretty sure this is over. Like, you don't have to be a genius to know that this is over. Um, so I think we can say congrats to Karen Smith for winning this 2-0. And Karen is in winner's bracket round 5, Black Oblivion is not out of ulti yet, he is gonna be in round 5 loser's bracket. You guys can see right here, Extra Sign versus CL is gonna be in uh, 90 minutes. Oof. The Star Lord versus the HO Lord. Karen passes the Vision of Zapdos. I mean it's pretty obvious that the game is already over, gets a crit there, doesn't do enough. I'm pretty sure heat wave kills from here. So there's a free heat wave. A lily is pretty low. Oh defox, okay, okay. I thought we'd just heat wave there, but defox is understandable. Um in case you switch out with the Zapdos and come back in, you don't want to take rocks. So completely understandable. But even if rocks were up, can run this game anyway, I'm pretty sure. Like at this point. Um like even if Zapdos has to take one round of rocks, like that's fine. So yeah, Zapdos can come out here or clav. Like the wish pass and the Zapdos like is super f like nice for Karen. Like even if rocks would have been up, like it would have, would have been fine. Like it doesn't matter. This heat wave is gonna kill you. Yep. And here they go. Just free switching to Jirachi. Yes, he doubles in the land, but it doesn't do anything. Um, Karen can just go back into Clive or Zapdos here. Protects. Okay, okay, that works as well. And now Karen can switch. I hope you guys all enjoyed. Um, stay tuned for more old year coverage. I'm pretty sure it's gonna end in a bit. They really, <laughs> they are, but yeah, props to Black Oblivion. He keeps trying. Um, yeah, I don't think. At first, I thought Black Oblivion misplayed, but to be fair, since Rocks were up, I don't think he could have really gotten the Kun any more healthy. And what else? Power Punch Lopani was like his only way to pressure Karen and. Yeah, but Kofel was always healthy, I don't know, like, if his lander had like a Z-move or SD, that could have put in work for sure. Didn't have it, oh well. And if he had hazard control, it could have also helped him. So yeah, Karen can just defog. Or oh, Heatwave, not that it matters. 
go back into Jirachi here. Yeah, nice predict by Black Oblivion, but Karen can just protect or go on a cliff. Yep, go on a cliff. And I don't know if he's out of Earthquake or if he went for knockoff predicting the Zapdos. I think he tried to catch the Zapdos. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he wasn't out of Earthquake. Otherwise, if he was out of Earthquake, Karen wouldn't have wasted a softball there. Pretty sure he still had Earthquake left. Uh, yeah, Zapdos can just roost here. Oh, he okay, he was. It's fine. It's rid of the Nihili go and Black Oblivion forfeited. As he, um, yeah, I think, yeah, so he could have, even if uh, Zapdos died to, I think Zapdos is probably faster than Lando, but even if Lando is faster, I haven't paid attention early when when it was Zapdos versus Lando, even if Lando is faster, um, Clefable in the back just won at this point. Um, thank you guys for watching. Basically, after the Lele and the Nihiligo went down, went down and the, yeah, Clefable just won. And yeah, congrats to Karen. Good luck to Black Olivia in the next round. Um, they're both good players. Like, like Karen was like not that well known in the tour scene, but like Karen is um performing pretty well in ulti. And yeah, I'll see you guys later or tomorrow whenever I'll upload um the uh, the last ulti series between Extra and CL. And peace out, Bob.